Hi everybody, my name is Carissa Mamathan. I'm a law professor at the University of Ottawa and I'm here today to give you a few comments about my new book, The Tenth Justice, Judicial Appointments, Mark Nadon and the Supreme Court Act Reference, written with my amazing friend and colleague Michael Plaxton at the University of Saskatchewan. This book was just released as part of the UBC Press Landmark Cases series. And the landmark case it discusses is the Supreme Court Act reference, which is one of the strangest incidents in Canadian legal history. It involves the failed appointment of a Supreme Court judge, Mark Nadon, who was nominated to the court by Stephen Harper in 2013. Justice Nadeau had sat on the Federal Court of Appeal, and this raised concern over whether he was eligible to fill the seat of the departing judge, Morris Fish. Justice Fish had hailed from Quebec, and under the Supreme Court Act, Quebec is guaranteed three seats on the court, which must go to either judges or advocates, i.e. lawyers, from Quebec. And so the question was whether Justice Nadeau was eligible for one of those three Quebec seats because he sat on the Federal Court of Appeal, not, it would seem, a court in Quebec, and he was not, at the time, a member of the Quebec Bar. He had been in the past for a number of years, but not at the time of his appointment. And so this caused uh, a debate. It was the first time this particular situation had arisen and in fact, after he was sworn in, Justice Nadeau's appointment was challenged in a case. And as it turned out, he never in fact heard a single case. Instead, the federal government referred the matter to the Supreme Court through a reference proceeding. And in 2014, the Supreme Court in a six to one opinion advised the government that in fact Justice Nadeau was ineligible because it ruled that he could not be appointed under to one of the Quebec seats when he was currently sitting on the Federal Court of Appeal. The court went further to say that if the government wished to make changes to the Supreme Court Act, perhaps to permit someone in Justice Nadeau's position to sit, to occupy one of those three Quebec seats, it would have to do so by means of a constitutional amendment. It could not simply amend the Supreme Court Act through ordinary law. Instead, the Supreme Court held that it is in fact protected under the Constitution from a variety of changes to its composition and essential features. And it held that changing the qualifications of judges was one such change. This was an extraordinarily significant part of the opinion because, in fact, as strange as it might seem, the Constitution of Canada does not specifically entrench the Supreme Court as a required institution. This is uh, very unlike, for example, the United States Constitution, which does require a Supreme Court to be uh, instituted and created. There was never such a provision in the Canadian Constitution. Instead, Parliament was given the authority to create a general court of appeal should it wish. And of course, it in fact did that in 1875. It created the Supreme Court, but it did so through ordinary law, not a change to the Constitution. And so this had always uh, created a bit of a mystery around the status of the Supreme Court of Canada. Did it have constitutional status? Could it be changed through ordinary law? Could it perhaps even be abolished through ordinary law? And in the Supreme Court Act reference, the court held that it could not. So this reference was extremely controversial. Uh, Michael and I had argued on the side of a reading of the Supreme Court Act under which Justice Nadeau was in fact ineligible and the Supreme Court relied in part on our, on our analysis in its majority opinion. And so we had a great deal of fun writing this book. We uh, interviewed a number of persons who've not spoken before on the record. We also uncovered some documents that cast new light on the affair that give it additional richness and context. 
We were also fortunate enough to speak with Justice Nadeau himself, who was incredibly gracious, very accommodating, and also has some really interesting observations. So we're really excited that this book is out. We hope you'll give it a read. If you do, please feel free to reach out to either or both of us. We love to hear from readers. We'd like to know what you think. And uh, yeah, we hope that you will enjoy this new book, part of the UBC Landmark Cases series. Thanks very much and take care.